at this time, we are observing a left hemisphere from the medial point of view. Therefore, the anterior or frontal pole is pointing to the right, and the occipital pole is pointing to the left. The cut is somewhat off the midline, therefore we are observing some of the gyri in a cut profile. Our focus is on the telencephalic structures. Most of them are within the various lobes and territories of cerebral cortex. The centralmost component is the corpus callosum, the largest commissure bundle of the brain connecting the two hemispheres. We can also observe the anterior commissure, which is, of course, a commissure or bundle connecting the two temporal poles of the hemispheres. Next is the fornix, a white matter bundle appearing here. Posteriorly, it is actually projecting from the hippocampus, moving forward, and then it is coursing down through the body of the fornix as we arrive at the columns of the fornix, just posterior and adjacent to the anterior commissure. We can also see the lamina terminalis. This is lamina terminalis, which constitutes the anterior or rostral limit of the third ventricle. Overall, the septum pellucidum would be here as a thin sheet. As most of it has been removed by the off-center cut, there is a small remnant here. And therefore, we can observe a fairly wide area of the lateral ventricle just underneath the septum. This is the foramen of Monroe, or interventricular foramen, connecting the third ventricle to the lateral ventricle, as visible here. We can now focus on cortical territories from this medial view. Note that the projection of central sulcus has been marked by this pen. As we move anterior to it, we are identifying frontal cortical areas and posterior to it, first parietal, and then, having crossed the parietal occipital sulcus here, the occipital lobe now. We will be using additional landmarks for further parcellation in the cerebral cortex. First, here is um, colossal sulcus encircling corpus callosum. Also encircling corpus callosum, but in a wider circle, is cingulate sulcus. Running like so, and more posteriorly toward the parietal lobe, there is an upturned area of cingulate sulcus known as the marginal ramus. The gyrus in between these two sulci is identified as the cingulate gyrus. The anterior cingulate areas 
and then the posterior cingulate areas curving down here all the way to the isthmus or retrosplenial area of the cortex named after the splenium of corpus callosum here. So retrosplenial area or isthmus of cingulate gyrus here. From this point on, we can curve inferiorly and medially, also moving anteriorly into medial temporal lobe, into the familiar parahippocampal gyrus that we have already observed from the ventral perspective. Speaking of contributions of frontal lobe to the medial surface of the brain, let us observe the top of central sulcus marked by the pin. As we move anterior to it, we are in frontal lobe, tracing the medial extension of superior frontal gyrus. We can do this all the way to the ventralmost and anteriormost portion, the gyrus rectus, which we have already seen from the ventral perspective. In addition, the subcolossal area is formed adjacent to lamina terminalis and the anterior commissure, just ventral to the anteriormost portion of corpus callosum here. So this is the subcolossal area. For functional and clinical reasons, we may link this to the medial prefrontal cortex, but other descriptions will associate it with the larger concept of the limbic cortex, including the cingulate gyrus and parahippocampal gyrus, thus forming a complete ring around corpus callosum. Note that the projection of central sulcus will help us identify paracentral lobule here on the medial surface, with the anterior portion of it belonging to frontal lobe and the posterior portion belonging to the parietal lobe. As we move posteriorly in parietal lobe, just posterior to the marginal branch of cingulate sulcus, we enter precuneus. The so-called subparietal sulcus separates precuneus from the posterior cingulate area. And then the main landmark between the parietal lobe and the occipital lobe is the parietal occipital sulcus, running like so. As we enter occipital lobe, we identify the cuneus portion of it, this wedge-shaped area which is formed between the parietal occipital sulcus and the calcarine fissure of occipital lobe. Just ventral to calcarine fissure, this is the lingula or lingual gyrus of occipital lobe. To finish up, our observations here posteriorly, we can also point to these occipital gyri that we have already seen from the ventral perspective. To sum up, in this video, we have identified several important landmarks, white matter connections, 
and cortical territories visible from the medial perspective.